<clears throat> okay. Now, I'm going to take a rather huge topic, and uh, hopefully I'm going to condense it down into very salient uh, hamburger formats and uh, make it simple and extract uh, the good part. Because I used to read so much every day, I still do, and there's nothing I hated more than reading a hundred pages and only getting one sentence of good information out of it. It's like, I know I flapped my lips, but at least I'm succinct. Hopefully so. Uh, we're talking about Ansel Adams' uh, zone system and how this is, of course, nothing has changed in digital photography. And a lot of you have asked me to do a video or a video or two on the zone system of Ansel Adams. And uh, I'm going to do a lot better job at it than my uh, teachers back in photography school did because they really sucked. And I've had a few people say they've taken advanced courses on photography. It's like I didn't even understand what the guy was talking about when he was talking about Ansel Adams' zone system. First off, let's start with the premise of what is photography, and that's writing with light. Now, we've all got a bunch of digital cameras. I've got way too many digital cameras. Okay, let's start off on how applicable this uh, ancient, so to say, zone system is that Ansel Adams co-created as it pertains to digital photography. Okay, it is exactly pertainable to digital photography. It is not obsolete, as some have argued. It is sometimes overused as a crutch, which gets in the way of creativity. But digital pictures do not exist. Light is light is light is light, okay? So enough with the digital BS, okay? Digital is a data transmission and storage medium, okay? Not a photographic medium. No person on Earth ever has seen a digital photograph. There is no such thing as a digital photograph, okay? Now this is a digital JPEG image, but I'm not looking at digital light. I'm looking at light transmission through this iPad. The same thing with your prints, same thing with your photography, the same thing you're viewing through your viewfinder. So let's get rid of this BS notion of digital photography versus film. Now, back in the days of its creation, not to go into the history of the zone system, but the old motto was, back when I did more film than God, and I can't do it anymore because I've done too much of it, is he exposed for the highlights and you develop for the shadows, and you're able to use the various grades of contrast paper, and you're able to push and pull both the negative and or the print, you know, dodging and burning, on and on and on. So when it came to the zone system, it can be incredibly complex when it comes to film and paper and pushing and pulling on the, the film exposure development and uh, so you're pushing and pulling on the negative, you're pushing and pulling on dodging and burning on the paper so the zone system is just insanely complex and a lot of these photography teachers you know they're lost in the old days and I am too but we don't need to get into any of that but a lot of the complexity stems from that but a lot of the post-production pushing and processing obviously can be done in Photoshop but you want to capture it at the time that you create the image. You notice I said create the image rather than capture the moment. So let's get to the really nitty gritty hardcore premise of what the zone system is and how it's applicable to photography. Since the only really advantage of understanding the zone system is understanding what the hell is going on. You know, you can, so you can focus on making great images instead of pissing and mucking about worried about technique and exposure because all the technique and the exposure and the camera all that crap gets in the way of making a great photograph so how important is the zone system when it pertains to digital photography it is very important but it needs to be, reach a level of importance such that in your mind it becomes nothing other than muscle memory and you can make it muscle memory so that you're never thinking and placing yourself and your camera between that and the image that you're trying to create. It can become so reflexive, it's just like breathing. You know, nobody thinks about breathing unless they got a breathing problem. And it's the same, tr same is true. You can do this within a week, okay? Let's take a look at this picture here of the waterfall. Now, the one thing that is insufferable is uh, blown highlights but sometimes they're unavoidable but as long as you're not domineering the general rule of compositional values between five and ten percent of blown highlights and the only thing that's actually blown on this image of this waterfall is right up here as the sun is peaking okay so this is the scale this is the scale now the blacks didn't turn out perfectly black on my printer but you could just see that's perfectly black and that's perfectly white 
So you have a scale ranging from 0 to 10 or 10 position scales. Ultimately between that scale we have three scales. Okay, You completely ignore pure black and pure white. We have a dynamic range and we have a textural slash detail range. Now the detail slash textual range range is between dark black and a gray white. Okay, And you have a dynamic range ranging from 1 to 9. Okay, we can completely ignore a 0 to 10. We're not doing film pushing and pulling and dodging and burning on various contrast paper. So we can completely ignore that. So we have a dynamic range of 1 to 9. So we have 9. But ultimately all detail and textures exist between 2 to 8. Okay, so we have a detailed textual range between 2 to 8. So how is this applicable to photography and how useful is this in the real world? Well, let me get to that, and I'm going to try to take this huge topic and boil it down really fast. If you think I'm being long, you ought to see how many days and days it takes <laughs> a photography teacher to tell you what the uh, zone system is, and at the end of it, you're still scratching your head. It's like, what the hell did I just listen to? It didn't help me at all. So I'm going to be helpful rather than counterproductive, okay? Because time is money, right? We don't want to piss our time away doing that. So... Let's think about this image and we need to expose for... Back in the days of black and white photography, we would always talk about creating a silver image. And a silver image meant that it obviously had some blown highlights. Here it represents less than 5% of blown highlights. Here we have um, some uh, obviously inescapable shadows down in the 1 and the 0 where pure black or near black, okay? But they comprise, you know, a very small percentage of the total image created. So we'd always talk about a silver image. And that means if I took this color photo, it doesn't matter if it's digital or color or black and white. If I converted this to black and white, this would be a silver image. Meaning that it has a tonal range of a pure, uh, pure exposure of uh, both the detail and texture as a range between 2 to 8. Now, depending on the sort of composition you want, you may not want that. Obviously, you would uh, only expose for the uh, only expose uh, for the uh, the waterfall, and everything else would be lost. And that, of course, is a compositional choice that you make. But if you do that accidentally and you're not doing it on purpose, it's like, well, that picture turned out awesome. You know, it's not what I wanted, but it turned out really cool looking. That's kind of like the old analogy of the blind squirrel finding an acorn. You know, the, the squirrel that has eyesight you can usually find a lot more acorns than the blind squirrel. So by hunting and pecking around and sticking your camera in bracketing mode, you know, and uh, shooting the piss out of every shot taken, it's like, oh, well, you know, one shot, you know, I shot everything with a shotgun and uh, one shot actually hit. That's not the sort of photography you want to be doing. You need to start creating images rather than shotgunning. We, in, uh, in combat training, they call that spray and pray. That's where you actually stick your machine gun on full auto and you just spray the piss out of everything in front of you and hope you hit something. And a lot of photographers do that. They're capturing the moment. They're hoping they're getting a great shot. So how do you apply? Um, how do you apply the uh, this scale, Adsel Adams uh, uh, zones, to uh, your photography? The only other real advantage in understanding the zone system of Ansel Adams is that humans love texture. Regardless, they love texture. They actually like texture as much or more than sharpness. The zone system lets you maximize the detail and texture between the spectrum of highlights and shadows. Most of the time the answer would be that the highlights let everything else fall where it may. Okay, so you're exposing for the highlights and where the hell everything else falls is no big deal. Unless the highlight area is actually too small to ruin the shot. And here we have a completely blown highlight, for example, on this waterfall. There are certain situations, obviously so, that are unavoidable, like these two. Now, this is a compositional choice that these people are blacked out, and you can see the scenery behind them. I assume this is an airport. You know, you're exposing for that. Could you actually use the fill flash and illuminate the people? Yeah, but it'd be a buddy, uh, uh, you know, it'd be a muddy, boring shot. Compositionally, this is beautiful, it is more intriguing. There's a reason why a person took that picture. Now here's something that's unavoidable. You're going to throw your camera in spot meter, you're going to spot meter for the translucency of the poppies, and you've got a huge area of roughly 15% of your shot where the sun's coming in that's completely blown. Okay, It's up at 9 and 10, but it's unavoidable. But compositionally, it of course is beautiful. But you could use a partial neutral density filter to, you know, to, to lessen that, but this is perfectly a valid and beautiful compositional shot that as it exists. So how does this apply to the zone system? Okay, 
There's no camera on Earth that knows what the hell a highlight or a shadow is. They either spot meter, center meter, or matrix meter to produce sludge. Every camera in the world is designed to create as much of the image fall within this range right here, 4, 5, and 6, okay? Doesn't matter if you spot meter, center, we, uh, center, uh, center meter, or matrix meter. Every camera, no matter how expensive it is, wants to turn your shot as much as it can into sludge, unless you tell it otherwise. Your professional DSLR is not a point-and-shoot camera, so stop using it like one. So what do I mean in regards to the image, and how is that important? Here is a point where Ansel Adams talks about in his book, uh, from his book, uh, The Negative. He uh, takes two images of the exact same thing, and these are black and white photographs. And he says here, the subject was light gray paint peeling from a medium-valued wood. So let's just assume it's regular wood color, and it's a light gray paint. An average exposure used uh, without compensation produced a middle gray value for the average luminance of the wooden paint. On picture, I mean, this is dull, flat, boring. What you do is you have compressed midtones here. In other words, all your tonal range between 3 and 7 has been compressed into flat sludge. This is the sort of exposure you'd get out of matrix metering. Remember, this is light gray paint. This is actually what your eyeballs, very close to what the Ansel Adams' eyeballs were seeing. In uh, picture number B, by giving two stops more exposure, I achieved an image in which the uh, paint and wood were rendered more nearly as seen. The zone system exposure produced uh, us to enable to visualize uh, the desired final values of the image and give an exposure appropriate to achieve those values. So you see what he did here? Now, let's look at the scale and let's, at, let's look at our image. Up here we have our scale, okay? Down here we have our image. Now let's take a look at something else really quick and we'll get back to it. Here we have the full, full spectrum between 0 and 11, which is 11 stops. Between that, we have a dynamic range between 1 and 9. But between that, importantly, between 2 and 8, we have a, a detail and texture range between 2 to 7. Okay, so here we have the irreplaceable written in stone zone, uh, zone system of Ansel Adams between 1 and 10. Okay, so you're taking a picture of snow, or you have a huge waterfall, you're in close, okay, and what you're taking of your waterfall is not this image, but for some compositional reason, this is what you want. You stick your camera on matrix metering, what's going to happen? Okay, this has a value mostly of 8. You see what I have down here? I have my uh, zone range, okay, my zone system of Ansel Adams between 0 and 10. I have an average of 8 here. Remember, every camera wants to turn everything into 4, 5, or 6, preferably 5. So what it's going to do is, since this fills up 80% of the composition of my shot, what it's going to do is I'm going to take 8, and it's going to push it over here to 5. It's like, oh, well, great. I'm going to take 8 and push it over to 5. So now let's look what happens over here. All these details over here are completely, they're blown to, they're murdered. Okay? You have a tonal range between 2 to 4 that are completely lost. Now if that's the sort of compositional value and image that you're trying to create, that's great. But you're not shooting blind like the blind squirrel looking for a walnut. You know, you're supposed to be the sighted squirrel creating images, you know, rather than spraying and praying with, well, let's, you know, let's bracket every shot. I know a lot of people that, some of them are actually professional photographers, and they never learned the zone system. They were probably taught nonsense, like I was in school. It's like, we had a week on the zone system, and afterwards we were like, how the hell is this applicable to anything that I shoot? How is this useful? It's not, and they forget about it. So they bracket the hell out of everything. Like, oh, well, that one turned out nice. How about a little bit more discretion? Rather than spraying and praying, okay, and what my camera has done is take an exposure value of 8, which comprises in matrix metering, for example, or even a center weight. <coughs> it's taken everything and it's shifted it over here, 8, to say 4.5, okay? So that means all my shadow details over here, all these details that I wanted, if I wanted them, for example, are lost. They're murdered. They're dropped into black and absolute black, okay? Dark black, very dark and medium dark. All these fine textures and tones over here are lost. They're just lost. The same is true if you have an image that is mostly in the shadows. Let's go on to video number two, and then we'll finish up, okay?